This guy had a Rolls Royce, and he's like the double R stands for reoccurring revenue. You don't get one without the other. Coming up on the Melanin Money Show. You got to have a business to where people are calling you back for more work. We, we really need some more customers. You know, can you like refer us to one of your friends? It's, it's no. If you have a world-class product or service, you should not be shy about asking your existing customers whom you've got results for. Hey, is there anybody in your network that could benefit from what we do? So you could tell somebody all day that you're the best videographer, best content creator, best what chef, whatever, right? But it's not until they see somebody else that you served and provided your service saying that they're like, oh, they might want to check you out. That is the cheat code to being able to build a sustainable business is retention. What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome back to another episode of the Melon and Money Show, New York edition. In this brick ass weather. Why would you call me out of Medellin, Colombia with his 80? It was your suggestion. <laughs> it was. Because y'all got limited uh, destinations on yes, the right flights. So yes, it's your suggestion. It is, but yeah. It is 20 degrees, but it feels like it feels like negative 20 degrees right Bro, now. Bro, I, I don't understand why people voluntarily sign up for this. But it's also hella cold in the South right now. Yeah, it's, it's cold everywhere right now. Except, except, except for Columbia. Yeah, a few yeah. places. <laughs> um, but no, nah, it's all good. We up here. Uh, the good news is I can get, get to get these fits off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hey, 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 look, man. Uh, <laughs> George, <laughs> George outfit game. When he can put on layers, hey. this man takes advantage of putting on layers. Gloves, <laughs> overcoat. Listen, we're we going to get the vibes off. Yeah. But, uh, but nah, man. So how you feeling, bro? Besides being cold. Uh, it feels good, man. I, like, I love New York. New York's energy is a vibe, man. Yeah. Uh, the hotel you got to stand in is a vibe. It's actually a vibe. It's Equinox. expensive, but... You know, sometimes you got you got to pay to play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, when I when I, when I when I walked in, I was like, I was like, man, I can't be, I can't believe we paying this much for the hotel. Then I then I walked into the hotel and I was like, okay, I understand why we paying. This. I, I, <laughs> listen, I said on my stories the other day, I'm not the guy that oh, we're not gonna be in the hotel. That much. let's get the cheap hotel. Yeah. It don't matter where we stay. That's, that's not me. I'm not I'm not that guy. Right. <laughs> Everything's got to be a vibe. Yeah, you, I mean, you got to sleep. But now, now, did you sleep good? So hey, they the best pillows I've probably slept on in the last ten years. That's saying hey, Equinox. E hey, Equin e Equinox hey, listen. Hotel. It's a vibe. The gym, bro. The gym is... You get the whole gym. You get the whole... It's a whole gym experience. So... Hey, Equinox, we are in New York pretty frequently, so we're going to send you this clip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All, all we need is free lodging. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's not too much to that's ask, That's not too much bro. to ask, right? That's not too much to ask, That's bro. not too much to ask for y'all to be our official, the official hotel of Melanin Money when we're in New York City. Yes, sir. Um, But what you want to talk about today? Well, I guess before we get into the, the topic, let's get some current events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the current event I want to bring up, selfishly, is this new tax law that might pass, bro. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a new tax law that, that could be passed in the upcoming weeks that would drastically change uh, everybody in America's tax situation. Um, there's some additions to the child tax credit mm -hmm. that will help a lot of people with kids get a lot more, get a lot bigger refund. Yeah. Um, there's going to be some research and development credits that business owners can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, at least most importantly to me, is the bonus depreciation coming back to 100%. So those mm -hmm. of you all that didn't know, 2021, 2022, bonus depreciation was 100%, meaning if you bought a piece of equipment like a vehicle, per se, and it was over 6,000 pounds, you get to write off 100% of the cost. It's 60, It's going to be 60% in 2024, unless this bill gets passed, where it goes from 60% back to 100%. If that happens... My tax bill is going to drop dramatically. A lot of other people's tax bills are going to drop dramatically. So I'm just, that's my biggest current event right now. If this passes, y'all, stay tuned. Like, if it does, I'll be the first person to drop some content about it. Yeah. But, like, yo, that, that's going to be crazy for everybody. And as an investor, I would proactively start to identify what companies might stand to benefit for the uptick in people wanting to make these purchases because wow. of the, I say, you got to think. Wow. Right? So that's where, I, that's where my head goes. Because we saw how inflated G-Wagon prices were. Right, during the 100% the bonus depreciation phase. G-Wagon prices were, they were selling $100,000 over MSRP. It was, it was insane. It was crazy. Right? So I would look at uh, different equipment. Cars are obviously one big one, but look at other equipment that will fall underneath this and determine, is it a publicly traded company? And could it make sense to potentially get ahead of that? Caterpillar? Maybe, Caterpillar, right? Maybe even go back and look at how the stock was performing at that time. Obviously, past performance doesn't indicate future outcomes, but if it you saw that uptick when it was 100%, there's a chance that it maybe potentially could you know, take take another spike. So. That's why you're my financial advisor, bro. Hey, man. See, look, you know. Somebody, somebody got to do it. Somebody got to do it. Somebody got to do it. <laughs> you going to save me the money on taxes so I can have the money to invest more money. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, so no, that's 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 super exciting. I did see that. Um. Shout out to Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods uh, has been with Nike for, 
I sh- over 20 years, at least. Do you know how much they paid them over 20 years, bro? Over nine, uh, mm, there's a lot of money. I think over 900 million. Yeah, I think roughly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, But yeah, she, they finally decided to part ways with their partnership, equitable partnership, you know, but I think he's just decided to go in a different direction. They're deciding to go in a different direction. But shout out to- Tiger size with Jordan. <laughs> right or, or East Side Golf? Uh, that would be crazy. That would now that would be lit. That would be insane. Yeah, that'd be lit. Uh, the picture. Uh, uh, no, I'm not gonna bring it up. What? Um, <laughs> I fucking I bring it up. <laughs> We're here now. Wait, one of our one of our homies uh, just took a picture with Diddy. Oh, um, oh, 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 oh. but Diddy had the East Side Golf hat on. He did have the East Side. He did have the East Side Golf hat. Yeah, on. yeah. So their yeah. brand is definitely spreading like wildfire. They actually just secured a funding round for I think. Two point five three million dollars or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so shout out to those guys, man. I love their, their some one of my favorite golf brands now. So shout out to Eastside Golf, okay, for sure. Yes, sir. Um, but yeah, let's get into it, man. So you know, we were talking uh, over dinner yep. uh, last night, actually, right? So this is yep. real time a, a dinner where we couldn't drink, but it didn't feel like it didn't feel like it. That's a fact, yeah. right? So anybody do, participating in Dry January or just trying to take a, take a break from drinking, I'm gonna give y'all some hacks. Number one, you gotta have the sparkling water, right? Yeah, the sparkles make you feel like you got something going. Got a little, got got, you know what I'm got at least a white claw or truly a something. Something, and you got the lime in there, you you good money. Yes, sir. Then you get the uh, or to get the ginger beer with lime juice. It's basically a Moscow Mule without the liquor. Yes, sir. Right. So that's that's a home brand. And what we learned last night, mojito. Mojito without without the liquor is also a vibe. Virgin right? mojito is virgin mojito is a vibe. So if yeah. you're trying to find have something to drink while you're out and you're not drinking, those are three recommendations. Yeah, we're twenty days in, man. Uh, days in. Yeah, eleven more to go. <laughs> Could not come fast. It honestly has not been has not been that bad. We did it no. with August of last August year. August almost didn't make it. Like August was probably one of the biggest challenges of my life. But like what and it just proves as a as a as a as a human being, once you prove something to yourself once, mm. that that bodes as confidence the next time you want to do something. Yeah. Right. So we did we almost couldn't you know, August was really, really hard, but since I know I can do it in August. When we do it in and then, well, since we're doing it now, it's not that big of a deal. But big facts, yeah, big facts. So yeah, we were talking over dinner about just like um, some some principles that we want to make sure that we instill in our business and continue to amplify. And we thought it'd be good to share it with y'all um, yeah. in terms of like what could be really beneficial in twenty twenty four as you try to get more out of your business. And it's the three R's of entrepreneurship, right? Mm-hmm. The first and most important one is results, right? There's so many people on the internet that you know want to sell something. Want to want to get more clients? Want to get you know make a million dollars, but they're not even getting results and a track record with the existing people that are already in their in their pipeline or are their customers, right? Mm-hmm. So if you want to have a successful business, instead of trying to think I need to update the landing page, I need to have a better funnel, I need to have a better website, I need to create more content on social media. Do you have a product or service that you're delivering that's actually getting results to the people that you are serving? One thousand percent. That's the that's the baseline. That's table stakes. Yeah, because if you're not doing what you say you're going to do, then you don't have a business. Because all a business is is solving someone's problem. Mm-hmm. If you don't solve the person's problem, then you can't grow or scale a, a business in that way. Thanks. Um, and, and just a hack for anybody who's starting out a business. This is like one of the best fundamental less fundamental lessons I can give somebody that just starts a business. If you start a business and you're trying to like understand if your business can work or not, I would advise you to like work for the first five to 10 people for free. And the reason I say that is, see if you can get them the result for free because if you don't get them the result, but they, if so, if you, somebody's pay, somebody pays you mm-hmm. and you don't get them the result, they're gonna be upset. Right. And then they're gonna like, you know, trash your business, maybe mm-hmm. go on a uh, better business bureau or whatever. Right. But if you do something for free, and you don't produce a result, the person can't be that mad. Right. Like if you sit in a barbershop yeah. and do say the haircut is free, and your line that is, is at the back of your head. You can't. You <laughs> sat down for a free haircut. Yeah. So when most when most new business owners, they don't know how to produce the result yet. Mm-hmm. So what my recommendation is: do it for the first five or ten people for free right. to make sh- to reassure you mm-hmm. that you can provide the result. And, and 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 that's very important, right? Because you may have gotten a result for yourself, right? May hope I hope that you yeah. at least got that, right? Yeah. But I'm getting right, right. But getting a result for yourself is not mutually exclusive with being able to transfer that to someone else. And I think that's where people go wrong in business. Mm-hmm. You did something right one time, and I link in my body. You 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 braided your cousin's hair, and now and now you're a celebrity hairstylist. Yeah, you right? lost weight, and now you're now you're a fitness coach. But like, right. You know like there's different situations and there's different, like there's a whole different rules when it comes to getting results for other people. You have a really good framework. That's the three E's. I have one that's similar. And what I say is the first thing you got to do is you share, right? So for example, let's say you're doing something and it seems to be working. Mm-hmm. 
just invite people into that journey. Hey, y'all, like, I'm, I'm trying this new weight loss thing. It's working out for me. Just want to share what's going on with me. I'm not saying I'm an expert. I'm not saying I got it all figured out. Just share what you're doing, right? Then once you actually get results, you can kind of pinpoint, I did this to get th to make that happen. Then you can educate, mm -hmm. right? So, okay, I did this. This is what worked for me. If you're the exact same person as me, it probably could work for you. Then after several people get results, then you can advise because you have a big enough sample size where it's like, I know enough about this to where I can get results for different people, different sectors, different industries, because I have enough sample size to know that it works. Mm -hmm. I think what happens is people get results for themselves, kind of, and they jump out the jump off the bridge, and now they think that they're the super guru mm -hmm. and can get everybody results. Yeah, and and I think the 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 real purpose for this is once you get other people results, those people are now your testimonials, Big right? Fun. Because when somebody when we go look at an Airbnb or go look at a restaurant, the first thing we're going to do we, we, how many stars? How many stars? When we went right. to the restaurant last night. It was like. Does it got four or five stars? Like, we they don't got at least four stars, we ain't going. Right. Um, so the reason I like doing work for free to start off as a new business owner is because once, first, see if you can get somebody results. If you do that, check the box. Mm -hmm. Then those people that you get results for get testimonials for them. You gave them free service and you gave yeah. them results. They're not going to give you a testimonial. Of right. course they will. Right. So then you have four to five to ten testimonials for your website. So when you start trying to charge somebody... When they do the research on you, you'll have 10 positive reviews and then that'll make them come back and actually pay you what you're worth. Because what you don't realize is like your words are propaganda. Somebody else's words is gospel. Mm -hmm. So you could tell somebody all day that you're the best videographer, best content creator, best what chef, whatever, right? But it's not until they see somebody else that you served and provided your service saying that they're like, oh, they might want to check you out, right? Yeah. So look at it as a marketing expense. Like it's not free work. It's like, yo, look. I can work with this high-level person, and if you're really smart, here's a hack. Talk about it. Yeah, I, see you, I see you about to get spicy. Let's yeah. talk about it. If you're really smart, what you would do is you would go after somebody who has your ideal customer within their audience, mm -hmm. who has a, a ideally in a large audience. Hey, look, I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm gonna cook meals for you for a week. I saw you talking about you wish you had a personal chef. I think I'm one of the best out here, but I know you don't know that. So I'm gonna cook meals for you for a week. My only ask is if you love them, right? That you tell your audience about it. That's it. Free food for the week. Now. That person has already established trust with that audience. So if you can get them to give you the cosign and they talk about it publicly, it costs you, it costs probably $80, right, to make that stuff plus your time. How many new potential customers might you get out of that by getting in front of your ideal audience by hacking somebody else's audience, right? That's the real, that's the real hack, right? Like, can I get in front of somebody who has my ideal customer, do something for them at cost well, and get a testimony? You do that. You might. You might not have to worry about customers for a while. You. You. You won't because um, it. It just. It gives you so much positive equity with that person, right? We, like, mm -hmm. we talk about relationship equity all the time. That's one of the things that most business owners fail to invest in, right? right. They, they fail, fail to invest in relationship equity. If you get, if you build a relationship by giving somebody free work, as human beings, we operate off the reciprocity rule. If somebody says, hey, man, your kicks is fly, you're like, hey, man, thank you, appreciate it. I like your shirt, too. Like, you are yep. thinking about a shirt because yeah, it gave you a compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel obligated. Right. That's just how we operate as human beings. So mm -hmm. I think these hacks are like, for new business owners, mid-sized business owners, people trying to scale, getting results and then using your results to help amplify your business or have somebody else amplify the results to amplify your business, it's just going to take you to a new level. Yeah, because the only reason why you would be afraid to give away a free sample is if it sucks. Is if, you, if it sucks. <laughs> like if you're worried, like, or if you're not, if you don't know enough. So if you're in the inf information business, people are like, oh, I'm going to give away my best stuff because... Well, bro, go learn some more, yeah. right? Like, the only if, thing you can take from me is notes, baby. That's it. Huh? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're afraid that giving away something is not, is either one, they're not going to love it, or you don't have enough to give more to give away, then you just need to become better, and maybe you're not as ready as you thought you were. All right? All right. So, my opinion is that if you don't have customers or clients that want to come back over and over again, mm -hmm. right, you don't have a business, right? You're just a really good salesperson. The 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 The... The analogy I always like to use is uh, anybody can have a one night stand. The question is, will she call you back? Yeah. Right? Yeah. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Right time, right place, you know what I'm saying? Shoulder to shoulder to cry on. Yeah. 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 One, two, <laughs> like, like, like anybody can anybody can have that. But the question is, will she call you back? The reason why I say that is when you think about your business, if you don't want to feel like you're starting over every January, right? You got to have a business to where people are calling you back for more work. So, for example, we're back in New York City. I was here last month. I work with a really great video team, right? Mm. Shout out Media Masters, right? So, like, mm. I'm working with them. We're working with them again yeah. because they Excellent deliver. service. You know what I'm saying? Excellent service. And so, it's like, 
that is the cheat code to being able to build a sustainable business is retention because it just compounds, right? I got 10 clients in 2024, right? Eight of them stayed. I got 10 clients in 2025, Eight of them stay. Before you know, it's like, wait, I just wake up every January. And even if I don't get no new clients. You got to start off with 16 new clients at the top of the year. You know? It's, exactly. It's a snowball effect. Uh, um, remember that quote I told you? It was like, um, the guy had a, this guy had a Rolls Royce. Ooh, and, and, yeah. And he was like, yeah. he was like, the double R stands for reoccurring revenue. Right. Don't get one without the other. You exactly. know what I'm saying? If you, if you ain't getting reoccurring revenue, you don't deserve a Rolls Royce. So, right. Um, so retention, if I didn't say that, retention is the second R. So yeah. fir first is results. Then you got to get the retention. You got to get your customers to stay. So what I always ask myself at least weekly is what can I, how can I create a business that my clients never want to leave and want to tell everybody about, mm -hmm. right? So you're just always trying to find ways to over deliver, over serve, but that doesn't necessarily mean doing something new. Mm -hmm. like you remember last episode or episode or two ago, we talked about the more Better new, new framework. framework that would so, change your life. You change your life episode, if you haven't listened to that episode, to, right? You hate money. Like, you go, hate money if you don't listen to that. Go back and check that one out. Oh, yeah, Big yeah. facts, right? So it doesn't necessarily mean you're doing something new. It's like, what am I, what does my ideal client need the most and how can I make sure that they get to that faster, mm -hmm. right? Because if you give them what they want, not what you think they care about, not what you, you know, what you put on your website, but what your ideal client wants the most, if you can deliver that faster, I can guarantee that's at least one of the ways Right, that will help you retain more clients. Yeah, and like ask them what they want because here's the thing: as business owners, there's a difference between what you think somebody wants and what they actually want. Right, so providing the service that you promise them mm -hmm. is not a reason to, just to stay. That's what they stakes. paid you for. That's exactly. table stakes. If you right. said, "Hey, I'm gonna help you lose five pounds," they lose five pounds. You did your job. Congratulations. Right. Now, the question you need to be asking yourself is how can I over deliver to this person and give them something that I know they need, but they might have not asked for, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, I think that is, it's very important that you just ask, if you don't know, right. ask your clients, like, hey, wait, what, what, what ways can I be better? What, what, what's something that's missing in the service? So that you can just know and that you can add that on mm -hmm. to uh, whatever service that, that you're providing. And, and, and one thing that we talked about, oh, another way to build uh, retention is all business is is a problem solution cycle. Correct. That's it. Mm -hmm. Somebody has a problem, you solve it. Yep. What most business, what most, what most new business owners don't understand is that every solution that you provide for your client causes a, a new, new problem. problem. Yeah. And they're going to either pay somebody else mm -hmm. for that new problem, right? Or they're going to pay you to solve that new problem. Mm -hmm. For example, if a business owner can't get any leads and mm -hmm. your job is to help them with marketing to get some leads. Okay, right. you do that. Now they have leads, mm -hmm. but do they have a sales team that can convert those leads? Right. Or do they have a funnel to make the turn those free leads into paid leads? Okay, so if you help them with getting leads, your next offer to help retain them should be, mm -hmm. all right, I helped you get new leads. I have another, I have another uh, service where we will place a, a, a setter in your company who will call all the leads and right. try to close them on your product or service. Right. You solved the first. They didn't even know they had the second problem. Facts. But you knew they would have the second problem. So then you hit them with the next offer. Mm -hmm. Then they buy that. And then, okay, now you have somebody to, 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 to uh, close them, but now you don't have somebody to, um, to make sure they get onboarded. We have a service that will place you, whatever. But like, it's a problem solution cycle. Right. How many solutions can you create? And then how many new solutions to the problem that you created? How many times can you do that over again yeah. to help retain your customer? Hey. Aren't you tired of buying courses in those emotional states when you want to get a result, but then you actually don't do anything with the course? Do you know on average, the completion rate for a course is about 2%? But here's the thing, it's not entirely your fault. The problem is you buy the course, but you don't have access to the source who actually created it. See, that's why we're doing something different. With the Melon and Millionaire Club, you're not just gonna get access to courses. You'll get access to the people who created it so you can get your questions answered. Because it's not just about learning, it's about taking that, that information so you can start earning. So the Melon and Millionaire Club will give you access to courses, but not just that, it's an entire university of information. We have financial flicks, we have all pre uh, hundreds of previous recordings, but more than that, y'all, we have an amazing community of people just like you who are trying to become a first generation millionaire. So like GA said, like you can survive without community, but you can't thrive without community. So this is the place you need to be, right? 100%, because here's the thing.
If it was just about information, we'd all be billionaires with six packs. So that's why every single Monday, we're gonna set the tone for your week with Melanin Millionaire Mondays, where our entire community is gonna meet up, the energy is gonna be high, we're gonna set the intention for what we're gonna execute on so we can move the needle forward, and Carter and I and the rest of our team can keep you accountable. So, so that's enough information. You see the rest <laughs> in the club. All you gotta do, click the link below, sign up, and start your journey to your first millionaire year. Let's get it. Man. Let's go. Big facts, because people think about recurring, they, they think about multiple revenue streams the wrong way. Yeah. They think about like, oh, I, I want to do hair, I want to make bean pies, I want to like, no, like, yeah. like, how many ways within the vertical of, of the way you're already serving people can you continue to serve them deeper, mm -hmm. right? And to your point about uh, doing something that they don't, don't think about, it doesn't matter, like, so for example, like, we ask all of our clients to fill out a get, getting to know you better form, mm -hmm. right? And so let's say we have a client that lives in... New York, mm -hmm. and they get a new job, and we know that their favorite food is uh, Mexican or something, right? Now, that has nothing to do with the value proposition of our service, but we know that that first week that they're working, they just got the new job. Hey, congratulations on the new job. Here's a $25 gift card for lunch. Mm -hmm. We know that the last thing you want to be worried about, you know, in the first week of job getting on board is figuring out where you're going to eat lunch. Mm -hmm. We sent them something that their best friend probably ain't even sent them, yep. right? So it's little things like that that have nothing to do with the core value proposition that your clients will remember. Now, the key is you have to actually be delivering on the core value proposition. Mm -hmm. That's not going to supersede the fact that you're not getting them results. Mm -hmm. But if you're getting them results and you're doing things that don't even really align with what they think you are thinking about, mm -hmm. game changer. Here's one of the best ways I've, uh, that I've seen this um, in a, in, a, in a business, I didn't know you can do it in. Shout out to my dog, Shot, uh, the boat goat. He mm -hmm. had an Airbnb, uh, he has an Airbnb business where mm -hmm. he, had, he had an Airbnb that was like on the coast, right near like when a popular lake, right? Mm -hmm. So he had an Airbnb there. People would pay him, and it's like it's a high, it's a high price Airbnb. So mm -hmm. only high net worth people are gonna stay there. He had his Rolls Royce parked in the garage. Mm. And <laughs> so once they get the Airbnb, oh, you need a car to visit the city? Yeah. Here goes the Rolls Royce. The only option you're gonna get, but here goes the Rolls Royce. Right, right. So then they would rent the Rolls Royce as well. And then since the since the house was on the beach, he had his jet skis in the back. Uh, and hey, you want jet skis? We got the jet skis, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, and yeah. then he had a list of restaurants on the table when they got in, yeah. and he had a 10% revenue <laughs> share with all, all the, the restaurants. restaurants. So, bro, he would, he would. The Airbnb will only be 30 or 40% of the money he will make from that client. That's crazy. He'll make the money off the Rolls Royce. He'll make the money off the jet skis. He'll make the money off the refer. So like one business, yeah. we had business inside of a business inside of a business, and he was retaining clients that they didn't even know they was paying the same person. Yeah. That's lit. That's lit. That's lit. Shout out to him. No, I was like, golly. It, yeah, then it gets deep. He had, had like a partnership with a parking company. So when they went to the dock, they had to park the Rolls Royce somewhere. So then they had, they had to pay for parking. Listen, he got in and I was like, bro. Mr. Mr. Leaving with something. If, if not leaving nothing on the table was a person. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how can you do that inside of your business? Again, it's not, and people think like something wrong with like getting money from clients and multiple ways. Apple. Right. You give me, sell me the iPhone. Now I need headphones. Now I need hair, headphones. headphones. Now, I need, now I need a charger. You change the port. You change the charging port. So now I can't even <laughs> get regular headphones. So now I got to get AirPods, right? And right. It, the, now, now the AirPods connect with them. Now, now I got to get the Mac. So it's like, it happens to us all the time. Just get, as we always say, get, get on the, on the, get right, on the right side of how things work. work. It's that simple, right? So it's like, get on the right side of how things work. Your clients got to spend the money anyway. Mm -hmm. Why not spend it with you? Right, you're gonna increase the lifetime value of the customer, mm -hmm. and it's gonna make it more sticky because the more stuff they buy, it's like the Apple ecosystem. Even if Android, which is not, just get this to dispel the myth. Yeah. Even if it was a better phone, right? Even if it was a better phone. Did you see like the top five? The top five selling phones of 2023 was four iPhones and then one <laughs> one one Android. That's hilarious. <laughs> it was like iPhone 15, 14, 13, 12. That's Droid. Like, Are old models out selling your best. Yeah. That's crazy. But like, once you get in the ecosystem, it's almost inconvenient, yes. right, to get out, right? So if someone has multiple products or services with you, now you might not have your business set up this way where like they don't do one, they can't get any, but if you set it up the right way, it's going to feel that way. It's like, oh my gosh, like why, why would I ever stay at another Airbnb when I go to this city? Because I got to think about getting another car. Mm -hmm. I got to think about getting jet seats from somewhere else. Or I can just go to this one person mm -hmm. who can connect the dots mm -hmm. on all this stuff, right? So you create a brand ecosystem is what it's called. And that is what helps clients want to stick around, even if they don't want to, quite frankly. Look, man. Yeah, we don't make the rules. Yeah, we don't make the rules of the game. But like, right. if it's, it's going to happen to me, it's going to also happen for me. That's a big fact. That's a big fact.
So, All right, and so the last one is referrals. Yeah, man. Right? This is this is referrals. And this is one that I think that like people overlook from an intentional standpoint. I think everybody wants referrals. Everybody knows they exist yeah. as a possibility. Sound good. Yeah, but, but people, like, people overlook it, especially once you expand past like just a regular service-based business. Maybe you have something that's like online or more more scalable. Like you just think, oh, I'll just spend the money on paid ads, I'll create content, and I'll just get as many customers as I need. Mm -hmm. And you forget the fundamentals of business. The best form of marketing, regardless of the internet, is word of mouth. Because it's someone who has a trusted relationship with another person telling them about something, right, that, and now it's not me telling them, telling them about it, it's their friend telling them about it, mm -hmm. right? That, that will always be the best form of marketing. When, when I think about it, in the last, and I think I can say this confidently, in the last two years, mm -hmm. any any purchase over ten thousand dollars that I've made has came through a referral. Right. Like I don't think I've ever like seen an ad. Right. Oh, I'm gonna buy that. And, and then just like you know, just buy. But like whether it's a coaching, mm -hmm. a mastermind, um, a, a real estate property. Yeah. Like like I, every every time I spend a significant amount of money, mm -hmm. my go to is asking somebody who they went to right. that also spent that type of money. And exactly. so when you're talking talk about actually building a business or a high income business that has a high um, price service, do referrals are a must. Must. And it's the easiest way to get people. Like if somebody says, hey man, was he good? Hey man, go to him. By the time they come to you, they're not asking questions about right. your brand and how long have you been in yeah. business. Do you know hey, what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, it's just, hey man, my homie said he got, he got good results. Like, I trust oh, him. So yeah. the, the media team we're working with. Right. Came from, from a his business. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's crazy. So it's like, but but they all are connected because you're never gonna get the referral without getting somebody the result. Without somebody getting yeah. somebody the result on the first day, right? Yeah. And so it's like, and getting them the result over, like continuing to nurture that relationship because you might have did something for, right for them one time, but then somebody asks them six months later, like, yeah, I did use that one time. I know the video was fire, but like, I don't know if I recommend them today. Yeah, right. So it's all connected because like you got to make sure that you are delivering and taking care of the people that you have right now and then being intentional about how you get your referral. So one of the, one of the things we talked about last night is like, once you get somebody a big win, that's the best time to ask for a referral. Yes. Right? Now, again, we hope, just like being married, you you hope that your your spouse knows a little thing that you do that you love. Hope like, is not a strategy. Hope is not a strategy, right? You got to ask for what you want. So like, if you got somebody a result, you shouldn't feel shy about, hey, like, look at it like you have having a cure for cancer. How if I had the cure for cancer, how many people would you want to know about me having the cure for cancer? Right? Yeah. You'd want everybody to know. Right. So if you have a world-class product or service, you should not be shy about asking your existing customers whom you've got results for, hey, is there anybody in your network that could benefit from what we do? Yeah, Absolutely. And, it, and it's about how you act too. It's not, hey, like, you know, is anybody because we, we really need some more customers? Is, you know, can you like refer us to one of your friends? It's, it's no. Hey, we just helped you lose 30 pounds. Is there anybody else that you know that would want the same results as you? Mm -hmm. And then if you could tie status to it as 100%, well, that's right? Cool. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's a no brainer. So, hey, you just lost 30 pounds. I don't want you on the beach by yourself this summer. Mm -hmm. Do you have any friend that wants to lose weight so now you can have somebody? Or, right. hey, I just helped you make another $20,000 in your business. Mm -hmm. Do you have anybody else that needs this? Because when you're trying to now take a first class flight, Nobody else in your circle could take it because ain't nobody making the same amount of money as you. So when you can attach status and community to your referral system, mm -hmm. it's it, it's it, it would take your business. I'm gonna give you a perfect example. Y'all y'all remember uh, Clubhouse when it first was popping? Yeah. And you had to get uh, you got people got like two invites, right? So you now you have this perceived status and exclusivity because you were the conduit to being able to get somebody on this exclusive platform. So one thing you could do is like you could tell your clients, hey. Like we, we're becoming an invite only company. We only want to get more of the right people. So our top clients, we're giving them, uh, we're giving you uh, five spots or whatever you tell them to be able to refer people. Use them, use them, use them wisely now. Like they only refer like your your eight your A plus friends mm -hmm. because we're only growing our business through our existing clients. Invite only, referral only. But because you're a top client, right? You get an opportunity to invite your friends, right? So like, and again, and that could be true, right? So it's not a marketing gimmick. It's like you. What better way to find more of your ideal client than asking your ideal client, do they have anybody else like them? That right? Part. That part. So it's not it's not gimmicky. It's just but it's, it's it's positioning. It's understanding human behavior. It's understanding that people want perceived status by being associated with the things that they're affiliated with, right? And so if you can provide that um, by amplifying your existing clients, and now it it gives you the opportunity to get more referrals, it's a game changer. 
Yeah. So like, if you're looking at your business right now, you need to be asking yourself a few questions, right? Number one, am I getting the clients the results that I said I'm going to give them? If I'm not, don't move on. If you're not, don't <laughs> move. Go right. back and fix that first part, right? Mm -hmm. Fix your service, fix your product so you can at least give the people what you said you're going to give them. If you're doing that well, the next question to ask yourself is, how can I keep this customer in my business? Whether that is continuing to do the service so good that they never want to leave, mm -hmm. or is it how can I provide the next solution to the new problem that I'm creating by solving the first problem? Right. After you do the, those two things could take you to mm -hmm. six figures. Easy. Easy. Right. Easy could take you to six figures. And then once you're doing those two things well, if you just sprinkle a good referral system in, mm -hmm. you're, you're at seven. E like, if like, you, like clockwork. If you just sprinkle a good, like if you have a, um, a, uh, I was going to give a business example. Um, yeah, let's just give you the videography team, right? If you have a videography team and you're like giving clients phenomenal content, mm -hmm. right? And then you have a you have a point where like you you know you're giving them content and then you're following up with them, making sure that you're their personal content person, and then you get them to refer three people. Like if you have twenty people in your business and they refer three people each, you now have sixty. You just tripled your business with no new marketing just by being intentional just by oh, just by delivering and over delivering to the same person because it's not hard like people everybody wants to be the plug yeah. right you mean somebody that, got this, that's that that's, you know what i'm saying like so you mean somebody's got this fire video work right did you see the content they comment and get the fire emoji fire emoji bro who's doing your stuff you know what i'm saying like but if you have an intention it's one thing to be like yo i tagged them it's another thing to where there's an intentional process right it's like hey just send just send the potential people this link or whatever right so which brings me to my next point make yourself referable Right, so it's like if you hate money, <laughs> right? Then have a have a website that's hard to navigate. Make it make it hard for people to contact you. Like some of y'all, like I really feel like y'all hate. If I gotta chase you down to pay you, I'm not working with you. Cause I already know, as my uncle always likes to say, the sun shines brightest early in the morning. If, and if I gotta chase you down to pay you, I can only imagine, imagine the nightmare of working with you. Yes, like I'm trying to give you money, and that's hard. Oh my god, I already know. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to pay you. For the service you say you're gonna provide, and you don't even have a system to collect the money. Collect the money, right? So make yourself referable. Have a way, easy way to, for your clients to introduce you to them. Make sure that you're following up so it doesn't get lost. Like I just got connected with somebody. I'm not gonna say their name because I might. Hopefully, we still. Well, if I listen to my own advice, I shouldn't work with them because <laughs> if I listen to my own advice, I got referred to someone in the industry, uh -huh. and they and they got connected via text. And they have yet to respond. I followed up. They didn't respond. So I'm just like, but I heard they was good. But I'm just like, I'm following my own advice. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need to nip this in the bud. Yeah. Um, so yeah, make yourself referable. Have a system. In place. If text isn't the best way because it gets lost in translation, let people know, hey, if I, I love referrals. If you want to send somebody my way, send an email, copy my executive assistant. Or hey, here's a, send them this link to the contact form and we respond in 24 hours. Yeah, it should be an automatic referral book a call link. Yeah. So you don't even got to be in the process. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Remove yourself as bottom. It should be a link that only your referrals have, a specialized link that only your current clients have to refer you to people so that your, your, you or your team knows, your enrollment team knows this came from a referral. Let's treat them accordingly. Mm -hmm. And it should just be a collect money process because you know referrals, right. they don't ask that many questions. And who they were referred by so that you can thank and nurture or, or, that person. Yes, because when I, when I just, when I, when I reread the referral chapter in $100 million leads, they were just talking about some, some, some referral models that got me, right? So like uh, PayPal had like a, if you refer somebody you get ten dollars, right? And incentivize the person, and who's then the, the person referred get ten dollars. Right. Amex, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Amex Platinum if points. You, if you yeah. refer somebody, you they you get five thousand, mm -hmm. they get five thousand. That's personally, I think that's the best referral strategy from what I'm learning. We we, we implement in, in our business as we speak, where both parties get a win because right. now I'm the plug twice. Like twice. not only did I plug you to yep. get you somebody you want to work with anyway. They gonna give you a discount on your service. Mm -hmm. And what you don't know, I'm collecting a little scratch in my pocket as well. You know right. what I'm saying? I need that scratch. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's just a crazy strategy, man. So if anybody can implement that in their business, yeah. Unless you hate money, go ahead. Big facts. Well, y'all, we just gave y'all the blueprint to having more success in your business in 2024. Yeah. As we said, 2024 is a year or more. More, more results. 
more more recurring, recurring, more recurring and then more referrals. More referrals. You, you know what I'm you saying? Know, all that. And and, and uh, let us know, y'all. Seriously, uh, can y'all leave a uh, comment or leave a review on this episode? And the reason I'm asking you all to leave a review on this episode because. This is literally the conversation that me and George just had last night at dinner, right? Mm -hmm. And we were like, maybe our audience, instead of us coming to like plan episode titles of what we think they want, right. why don't we just let them in on real-time conversations and right. real-time updates that we're having in our business mm -hmm. as we speak? So um, please leave a review, whether it's on Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, or YouTube. YouTube. On like, dude, I really want y'all to do more of this because this would be easier for us. Right? Exactly. All like, we gotta do is like, what problems are we overcoming right now? And let's just talk about it on the yeah. podcast. So yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Well, until next time, guys. Thank you for tuning in to the Melon Money Show. Peace. Peace.